All right. Buddy. See la 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 la. See 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 see. That is what I did before every single time, Shelby. Yeah 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 yeah. Da 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 da. Oh my gosh. Hey, whatever works. Yep. Yeah. That's that's how that's how I get into my announcer voice. All right, let's bring Shelby on to the podcast today. Oh my gosh. Jeez Louise, what the frick is going on? We're all a loopy now. We're all loopy. All right. All right. Let's do this. Okay. Three, two, one. Hey, what's happening, you guys? Welcome to the Proclivity Podcast. I am, oh, there's an alarm going off in the uh, parking lot. Is that mine? (laughs) Hold on. That sounds like mine. I don't believe it's mine. Hopefully it's not mine. Is it mine? I don't know, but I'm going to check. (laughs) Usually we're the only two here uh, at this time, so. Oh, that's funny. As if the technical difficulties weren't enough. I know, right? That's hilarious. <laughs> looks like looks like it handled itself. Okay, that was so somebody else's. The great thing <laughs> is we're on Zoom and we can start all over. So this is fantastic. We it's, we're not live. This is so great. This is the way it was meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be this way. <laughs> oh, my cheeks already hurt. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Three, two, one. <laughs> hey, what's happening, you guys? This is the Proclivity Podcast. I am your host, Coach Joel. I am here with my co-host, Coach Emily. And if you are joining us, thank you. We love having you. And if you love what we're serving up, a like, a subscribe, and even if you want to get crazy, a review. Because right now, it's Emily has one review of our own podcast. Along that was with, when I, before I it's came okay. on Don't even telling worry. you, don't worry, even worry, right? We're not <laughs> judging you. We're not judging you. Okay. I swear that. Yet, 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 if you want to review, that'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. Our main focus here is to be able to help create healthier bodies and happier lives. We do that by focusing on and harnessing the power of metabolic flexibility and the power of our words. Two things really important. We help to make this simple. Might not be easy, but we make it simple. It doesn't have to be so complicated. That's what we do here at the Proclivity Podcast. We love that you're here with us. And we have a special guest today. This is going to be super radical awesome. When's the last time you heard radical, Emily? (laughs) I don't know. Today, that's the answer. (laughs) Super radical awesome guest today, Shelby, who who came to us via the proclivity uh, method. And she's going to talk about her experience. But yet before we bring her on, I want to give her a little introduction. Shelby is a wife, a dog mom, and a personal trainer. She is passionate about all aspects of health, especially food, fitness, and how to utilize both to create a more fulfilling and functional life. She helps to empower women and take ownership of their health with joy and gratitude. She, she spends a majority of her time snowboarding, hiking, and running with her pups, traveling, and guess what? Eating lots of great food. I want to welcome to the show, Shelby. Hello there, my friend. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thanks for coming. Of course. Tell me more about eating lots of great food. If you, because this is, this is, it's 5 p.m. here, Pacific here in Reno, Nevada, if you could have any meal, any meal right now, no price tag, what would you have? A burger. (laughs) No price tag. She hits straight to the burger. I had, I, yep. Um, Burgers have always been my favorite food. So I will always pick a burger as my go-to meal. Okay. So it sounds like you're a burger connoisseur. What, what is your favorite Mm. burger? here in reno in reno it's got to be beefies 
beefies down in been... Midtown. Yes. 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 I know exactly wow. what you're talking about. Never do you, been there. Do you, oh, it's a teeny little shop. Hole There's in like, the wall. Yeah. I, I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> they put yeah. little tents in the back uh, during the pandemic so people could still eat because oh. their diner area is like three stools. So small. <laughs> Like you walk in, boom, you're walking right into somebody's back. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they make some killer uh, milkshakes there too, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, see, there you go. Right. <laughs> Shout out to Beefies on South Virginia Street. <laughs> Let us know if you want a sponsorship. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I am looking forward to going home and I'm going to have myself a nice ribeye steak. Ooh. Oh, Emily. Oh, what are you going to have? Maybe some <laughs> cooked oats? <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm recovering from stomach flu. Good old daycare, the Petri dish, as Joel and I call it. And yeah. yet what it did is it gave us an idea, and this is going to be coming down the pipeline, guys. We're going to talk to you about how to recover from a stomach bug or food mm -hmm. poisoning, what to eat, <laughs> how to eat. These little things are super important, yet most of us don't know it. And that's because there's such a huge amount of, I would say, even over information when it comes to nutrition and health. So that's why we keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Keep keep tuning in. We'll have that info for you soon. <laughs> Boom. So Shelby, let's talk a little bit about you. How let's did you it. get? How did you get into the health and fitness uh, field, and doing what you're doing? Ah. Uh... It goes back to high school. So I grew up eating whatever the heck I wanted. My parents ate whatever the heck they wanted. Um, wasn't, wasn't aware really about nutrition, fitness, those kinds of things. Um, I got into high school and I started running track. I started doing Taekwondo. Um, and when I was 15, um, I started having seizures again. And my neurologist recommended I try the ketogenic diet. And my parents were like, there is no way we could ever do that. That is so crazy mm -hmm. hard, like all this other stuff. And so they're like, just put her back on the medication, you know, whatever sounds good. So, um, so that was my first kind of experience with like, wow, maybe diet can actually change your life. You know, mm -hmm. like there's been plenty of studies that show the ketogenic diet, um, helping if not getting rid of seizures in a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, but there was a lot of fear around it for my family because they just didn't know how to do it. So we didn't do it, but a couple of years later, um, my parents started wondering a little bit more about this nutrition thing. And so as a family, we tried whole 30 and we tried paleo. And from then on out, we kind of, um, we, we changed our diet for the most part to be a lot healthier, kicked out a lot of the processed stuff, focused more on meats and veggies on your plate, that kind of thing. Um, so that was kind of the start of it is me trying out these different, uh, diets. And I got to directly see how they impacted my performance when I was pole vaulting, when I was doing Taekwondo, those kinds of things. I'm like, wow, I can run faster. I feel stronger. I feel better. All these things. So that's kind of where it started. And then through college, I, um, yo-yoed back and forth a little bit a lot of that was a college budget and not understanding how to shop for healthy food mm. on a budget. Um, so, and then also, you know, just doing the college thing and eating out mm -hmm. a lot and doing kind of whatever I wanted. Um, but I didn't feel good doing mm -hmm. it. So I, I always came back to, you know, the basis of, of eating well, working out those kinds of things. Um, and then I started doing personal training with a friend of mine. Uh, she was my personal trainer. We did that for about a year and she's actually now in San Diego going to school to, um, for physical therapy, which is awesome. And right as we were finishing up right before she moved, I was like, you know what? I have had such an amazing time doing personal training with you. You've taught me so much. I feel so empowered. I'm getting so much stronger, all this stuff. I want to consider what it would look like for me to be a personal trainer. Um, so she was super supportive in me doing that. She helped me find the right program and all that kind of stuff. And so now I'm a personal trainer. Now I get to do that same thing for other women. And um, with the personal training comes 
the uh, just excitement for the nutrition side of things because they're so interconnected. So, um, so Emily reached out about potentially doing an interview. Um, and the rest is history. After <laughs> that interview, I was like, I'm all in for this proclivity method. And the proclivity method has just made me be all the more in love with nutrition and fitness and how interconnected those things are. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of my story with how I, how I got involved in that. Ah, oh, I love it. And I love that um, you were empowered, right, by your friend who um, is, is a woman. And then you took that same energy and you pass and are continuing to pass that on because you work mostly with women. Yes. Yeah. I work with all women right now. Incredible. Incredible. Um, well, thank you for your work and, and for helping um, women, empowering them and, and giving them that strength that is so huge and vitally needed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's a, good, a gift. A <laughs> gift. A gift. Um, so you went through the proclivity method, right? And we, we do things a little different in the proclivity method. And before we dive into what you got out of the proclivity method, what, what was the biggest struggle that you had with health and fitness, say before the, uh, the proclivity method and what your clients saw as well. So for you and your clients, was it similar or was it different? Did you have a different level when it came to your health? What was that? What that look like before coming into the proclivity method? Yeah, that's good. Um, the biggest thing for me was consistency. Um, in my interview with Emily, I talked about, man, I want to work out five days a week. And there are a lot of weeks that I only work out three days a week. And then kind of kicking myself in the butt for not hitting that fourth and fifth day. And uh, I saw the same thing in my nutrition of, oh, I want to eat clean all the time, or I want to eat clean 90% of the time. And um, I would eat clean 70% of the time and then kick myself in the butt for it. And I just, there, it, it just made things harder. Things felt really hard. It was like living a healthy lifestyle feels hard and I want it and I'm willing to work for it, but it feels really hard. Mm -hmm. And I see that a lot with the women that I train is they, you know, I, I see them once a week and they're like, man, I'm just not getting any results. And I'm like, I know. And I wish that I could change that for you, but that's something that you have to own. You have to change. I only see you once a week. It's the other six days a week that matters. It's, you know, it's what you like abs are made in the kitchen. You know, that whole, <laughs> that saying of it's, it's how, how you're sleeping, if you're stressed, what you're eating, those kinds of things. Um, so I would say consistency, uh, was my biggest, um, stuck point and not only consistency, but also like the guilt and just feeling bad about not being able, quote unquote, not being able to stay consistent in those things. Mm, golly, Hit, hitting home on that for sure. You know, that is something I know I have felt. Um, Coach Emily, can you resonate with that? At all? <laughs> for sure. I'm one of those I used to identify as a perfectionist and then that would lead me nowhere. Right. <laughs> so yes, I have done lots of work with that myself. So I resonate with you and yeah, I can't wait to, to dig into that deeper. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that we say in the program is curio curiosity over conflict mm -hmm. and that conflict happens with us in the nutrition and fitness and body image, right. Quite often you know, ah, oh, I only got three days in, dang it. Right. And, and Shelby, we had conversations with this yeah. even throughout the program of this, like this imposter that's coming around and sneaking around and, and saying like, oh, see, this is so bad. And that's the conflict instead of going, hmm, I didn't get my workout in today. I wonder what that is. Oh, well, my day was really filled up. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of time. Oh, why didn't I have a lot of time? Oh, I booked too many meetings back to back to back. Oh, if I booked so many meetings back to back to back, what if I booked one less? Yeah, if I book one less, then you'd have space. Oh, cool. We got curious all the way to the answer instead of conflicting what where most people stop at is just, I didn't do it. I'm a failure. Boom. End of story. Whoa, that's going to create this terrible pattern of oh, I want to work out, but there's a chance I could fail. And if I fail, I talk really poorly to myself and it makes me feel like garbage. So if I just don't get started, then I don't have to feel the guilt that I give myself 
when it comes to missing one workout. Can I get, can I get an amen, anyone? Amen to that. <laughs> okay. Yep. Thank you, sister. So we know that, right? You, you're struggling with a little bit of this consistency. You talk to Emily and you're like, okay, this is it. Like, I'm in, right? I know about health. I'm, I'm a professional in the field, yet I'm expansive. I want change. What was your expectations before you got into the program? What were you thinking? And then what did you leave with? Yeah, I, I was expecting with so many health programs, it's very much, here's your packet of things you have to do. And if you don't do it, then, you know, you're, you messed up, you failed, whatever. So that's kind of what I was expecting is, okay, Shelby, here's how um, you count macros. I'm going to give you a nice little app to do that. Um, here are, you know, your workouts to build muscle or to get leaner or to get stronger or whatever. Um, we've got them specifically programmed for that. Uh, you know, here all, here are all these rigid things that you have to do in order to hit your goals. So that's what I went in expecting. And part of me was like, okay, cool. Cause obviously I don't know how to do those for myself. So a little help would be great. And then part of me was that I don't really want people telling me what to do, you know? <laughs> so that's what I was expecting. Um, and yet after talking with you and Emily, I realized that's not what I'm going to get in this program. And it's not what I got. It was very, very much, um, what are your goals? How do we work towards them in a way that's sustainable, in a way that makes you feel more grounded and present, in a way that you know makes you excited to get up in the morning, makes you excited to go to bed at night, all those <laughs> kinds of things. Um, so it's just so, so personalized and empowering. I, I just keep going back to that word of empowering of you guys weren't putting in the work for me. I was putting in the work, but it wasn't overwhelming. It felt like, oh, cool. I have ownership in this. You know, I get to, I get to do what I want to do in order to reach my goals. And now I have the knowledge to back those things up. Mm. Empowering. Golly. I love doing these. <laughs> They're just so great. I mean, Y'all, you have to understand, Emily and I have put our heart and soul into this program and to be able to have people like Shelby uh, say those words is so, so rewarding. Um, Coach Emily, mm -hmm. do, you, do you have any questions yeah. for Shelby? <clears throat> so a lot of the times when we're talking about expectations specifically, <laughs> we have people be like, mm, yeah, I was getting into the program thinking I would get some nutrition advice and like the things you said, yet I didn't quite understand what they meant by, you know, life coaching or language work. Was there any expectations around that for you? Did you have an understanding? Um, <clears throat> maybe you had a little bit of an understanding after a clarity call, but was there any like, hmm, yeah, I wonder what that's going to be like what were the questions going through your head. Yeah. I didn't ever think about the language piece. And I rarely thought about the mindset piece mm -hmm. of it was for me, it was very much, well, if I just eat well and I just work out, it's going to be fine. It doesn't matter. You know, if I, mm -hmm. if I'm having a bad day and I don't want to do it, if I just do it anyway, you know? And so the idea that language can literally change your life, that was a little like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's a stretch, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll see about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and yet after our call, after that first clarity call and, and you guys talked about eliminating sock talk and I was like, huh, that kind of sounds cool. If, if I don't get anything else out of it, at least I'm going to sound really confident when I am talking to other people. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I gave that a go. I put it on my mirror. It's on my mirror to this day, eliminate <laughs> soft talk. And it's something that you know, I'm, I'm aware of now it's something that has completely changed. Like that alone changed like 50%. That was like 50% of the way to the hundred percent goal. Mm -hmm. So I, I, like I said, like that was never, you know, something that I thought about, I would be in workouts and be like, you're just not, you're just not working hard enough. If you just work harder, you'll get there. And being able to sit back and say, no, I work hard. I am strong. I am powerful you know, and if I don't do that last rep, okay. <laughs> and <laughs> awesome. You know, having that like power to be like, no, that last rep doesn't define who I am in this moment or ever. Um, that was totally life-changing for me. 
something I really did not expect before I started the the proclivity method. I listened to your guys's podcast about the inverted pyramid, mm -hmm. and I was like expecting to hear sleep, nutrition, and fitness. And I was like, cool, let's go. I know these things. And then you're like, nope, wrong, <laughs> language, <laughs> mindset. And I was like, I've never thought about those things, which means I've never been able to harness the power in that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was the language and the mindset was hands down the most transformative part of, um, of the proclivity method. And that's what truly got me to the next level. Mm. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. It, we get that from so many people are like, I, again, I came in for the nutrition and I left with this and I, my mind is blown. Um, <clears throat> because again, like you said, we don't think about that in our, in our culture. So yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. Simple and easy are not the same things, folks, <laughs> right? That's one of the things. We're going to make nutrition really simple for you. Yet, what's difficult is changing your identity. Just like Shelby was saying, she had this identity, right? And mindset was what we saw on Instagram, right? You just grind through it and you just get the next shit, which at times, absolutely, right? All the time, though we can see where perfectionism starts come in. And that's a really, really thin line because then if we don't get that last rep, what is our inner critic saying? What is the voice saying? And if we don't know how to handle that, right? It's like, it's like, it's almost in comparison of like, oh, you've never deadlifted before? Cool, here's 315. Go ahead, pick it up at the floor. Mm -hmm. You'll get it done. Yeah, you might blow out your spine, but you'll get it done. It's the same kind of concept when telling somebody like, oh, here's your macros. Here's your calories. Here's your this. Here's your that. Could they do it? They're going to do it. But without knowing the proper form when it comes to the language piece and the mindset of creating a new identity, literally stepping away from one identity, stepping into a new one. Just like Shelby said, she stepped into a whole new identity of like, no, I am powerful. Watch me do another rep. And then guess what? Watch me walk away from the rep just as powerful no change. The weight is just the weight. But Shelby walked away being powerful when she stepped to the weight and when she stepped away. And that is some really, really incredible stuff. Shelby, I'm, inter I'm interested in the community aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Now, the, this is a little bit different program, right? We do it on Zoom. We use a group messaging system. How was it walking into that? Have you done something before where, you know, you had a bunch of other people on Zoom and you're talking about, you know, some deep stuff in terms of your emotions and what you're eating and some of that stuff can be really vulnerable. Have you ever done anything like that? And how was it for you? No, this was definitely a first with that community aspect. And you, you said exactly what I was going to say is vulnerability. That's mm -hmm. totally what it was is, um, the first time I saw everybody on Zoom, I was like, oh, we're going to, we're going to really, we're going to do this. All right. <laughs> um, and it was, it was, it was totally scary. You know, you start talking about what are these lies that the imposter is telling you and like telling a group of five or six people, like the imposter tells me I'm not going to be a good mom. I was like, there's no way I can say that. There's no way I can say that to six total strangers. And yet I did. Yep. And it helped me to realize that is absolute garbage. garbage. That is a total lie. And now I have the tools to turn that on its head and to, you know, speak affirmations to myself of why I'm going to be a good mom, those kinds of things. Um, so the community aspect was so cool because, you know, it's, it's one thing to have examples of things in your own life. It's one thing to say like, Oh, Shelby, how is, how has, um, eliminating soft talk impacted your life, but it's a totally other thing to have five other people say, yeah, this is how it impacted my life. Here's how it's working at work. Here's how it's changed my gym habits. Here's how it's done all this stuff. And then realizing, wow, I, like we all have access to that power. It's not just my experience, but this is something that impacts everybody across the board. Um, so it was, it was awesome. It was terrifying, but it was super <laughs> rewarding. And, um, you know, being able to talk about those, those scary things, those vulnerable things 
help, help set you up for doing that in, you know, in the real world, in real life, outside of just the Zoom calls and the, and the group chats and stuff. I don't know if you guys did or did not catch that. Yet what Shelby said there, how many, let me ask you this, Shelby, that imposter statement, how many times have you said that out loud before the proclivity method? Zero times. <laughs> and she just said it okay, <laughs> on a the, podcast. <laughs> on a podcast that thousands yeah. of people are going to be able to hear. Yeah. <laughs> That's taking that, that is an identity shift where you go, wait a second, that doesn't define me. That actually has nothing to do with me. Oh, this is who I am. And you can see it like if you guys are watching on, on YouTube. The confidence that Shelby has is piercing. She was able to say that without a flinch. And that's because she knows exactly who she is and exactly who she represents. And that is the incredible work uh, that is an, a testament, a testament to you, Shelby, and, and what you did throughout the program. That's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you this. We talked about some language stuff. What's one of the nutritional habits that you learned throughout the program that was kind of like a, huh, would you look at that moment? <laughs> yeah, I think I knew going into it that nutrition is super um, individual, really depends on who you are. And yet going through this and talking about protein in depth and talking about fat in depth and talking about carbs in depth and realizing um, like I've told you guys this, uh, on, on different calls, but my husband one, runs really well off of higher carbs. His body loves that. He's like, I can eat a bowl of oatmeal and I'm good to go all day. My body, not so much. I'll eat a bowl of oatmeal and I'm hungry five minutes later. <laughs> so realizing, you know, my body prefers those higher fat, absolutely lots of protein. And that doesn't mean that how I'm eating is better or worse than the way that my husband is eating, but that that's just what each of our bodies need, you know? And so that was, that was probably the biggest thing is realizing, wow, everybody has unique needs. There's no one size fits all counting macros helps like a little bit, but really not that much. Mm -hmm. And it only helps if you, if you are getting that one-on-one -on -one coaching of, okay, this didn't work so well for you. Let's tweak it to this. Mm -hmm. When you're doing it just as, you know, well, I should just be getting 70 grams of protein a day. It's like, yeah, maybe, but probably not. Um, so that individual aspect was awesome. Uh, going into like different types of vegetables, specifically micronutrients was really awesome for me and has helped me to recognize what I'm eating throughout the day. And I realized, you know, I would eat a lot of eggs. I'd eat a lot of meat, you know, eat a lot of whatever, and didn't eat that many vegetables. And now that I'm eating more of them, I'm noticing a significant, like I noticing a significant difference in how I feel on the days where I eat lots of micronutrient rich vegetables mm -hmm. versus the days that I don't. And knowing like when I get to lunch, like, oh, okay, I haven't had too many vegetables today. That's probably why I'm feeling this way. Cool. I'm just going to add some broccoli with my dinner. I'm going to add bell peppers with my dinner. I'm going to add one more thing um, that I wasn't necessarily planning on having. And I know that's going to get me back to where I'm feeling really good. Mm -hmm. um, that was huge. Um, the biggest thing, and this is kind of mindset and nutrition tied together is just, it was the not beating yourself up when you don't hit the mark that you've set for yourself, you know, and being able to say, you know, we're talking about, um, curiosity kills conflict and saying, okay, I didn't eat as well as I wanted to today. Why? Okay. Now I've said why now I can work backwards. Now I can change that. And I can also allow myself to just be okay with that. You know, mm. it's, I can say, cool. I ate a burger with a bun today. <laughs> yeah. And it was so good. <laughs> and yes. just like realizing, okay, this isn't my everyday and that's fine. And that's great. And I have this freedom around eating out. I have freedom around going to the party. I have freedom to say no to the things that 
I don't want that I know won't make me feel good. I can say no when there's a lot of pressure of like, well, everybody else is eating it. Everybody else has alcohol at this party. Like, why don't you just have some too? It's like, I just don't want it. Mm -hmm. And period, you know, (laughs) we're good. No, period. Thanks though. And so that, that freedom, you know, changed things too. Like being able to say like, I might not be in my, you know, my hundred percent habits today and yet that's okay. And I still, I'm still healthy. I'm still strong. I'm still knowledgeable. I'm still all of these things, you know, that, that eating one quote unquote bad meal doesn't change about you at all. So many good things. (laughs) You're awesome. You're awesome. Shelby, I have a question. Another one. Um, and then we'll be wrapping things up yet. You being in this space of thinking again, Oh, like I, I have, a, I think I have a good understanding of what, it, you know, a nutrition program is like, and I know what I should be doing yet. What would you tell someone who's on the fence of signing up or who's like, well, I don't know if I actually really need this. Um, what would you tell someone who is in that spot about the proclivity method? Why are we different? Oh, that's so good. Um, if they said, oh man, I don't know if I really need this. I'd say you absolutely do (laughs) go sign up for it right now. (laughs) Um, gosh, I think just, you know, the, the individual approach that you guys take to each and every person, not just each and every cohort of people, but each and every person, the one-on-one calls, the weekly check-ins, all those kinds of things is so helpful to know, like, okay, these are the habits that I'm in. These are the habits I want to create. Now, how do I get there? And to have that support along the way and realizing that your habits that you want to create don't have to be the same habits as, you know, the, uh, the, that other people want to create. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a huge one for me. So the, the one-on-one support was awesome. And just how far, like how deep we dive into all of this stuff. It's not, it's the why behind things that changes it. It's, you know, it's talking about the micronutrients. It's not just saying, yeah, you need to eat more vegetables. Like, okay, great. Yeah, for sure. But you say, this is why, this is how this micronutrient affects you. This is how this micronutrient affects you. And it like makes you excited to go buy broccoli. You know what I mean? (laughs) So that is awesome. Like you, you break it down all the way to the basic level of why are we doing this? Why is this important? Now let's take the practical steps for how can we get there and how can we get there with a support team around you, you know, where you're going into this with curiosity, with excitement, with joy around it. And not just, oh yeah, I got to go buy broccoli because I need my micronutrients today, but like (laughs) genuine excitement to go buy that broccoli, you know? Um, So yeah, so those are, those are my two favorite things about this program with the one-on-one stuff and breaking it down, um, knowing the whys and feeling empowered to, to really tackle those things. Well, I don't know if you guys are listening right now, you're not signing up. Shelby's very <laughs> upset with you. Uh, go, do it. <laughs> go do it. If you're curious, if you've been listening to us and you're sitting here and you're listening to Shelby, Shelby just, I mean, she, that was a home run, home run, a triple and a home run, uh, in terms of talking about the program and very, very fluid, very well-spoken, mm-hmm. uh, Shelby. Um, and we appreciate your, um, your time. We appreciate your words. We appreciate you. And we are very excited to watch you as an ambassador of the proclivity method and of proclivity to go and teach. See guys, because we're not, we're not just here as teacher student. When you graduate the program, we go, great. Now you're, the, you're the teacher go teach. And Shelby, how many times did we say like, okay, this week, go teach this. And because you're a trainer each week, were you teaching people something? Yeah, absolutely. I've gotten to, to talk to all of the women that I train both in group classes and on -on one-on-one sessions. And I say, let's break it down a second. I don't, let's not talk about the deadlifts. Let's not talk (laughs) about the, you know, the bird dogs that you're doing or whatever. Let's talk about like, how do you talk to yourself? How's that going? You know? And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, no, how do you talk to yourself? Like what language do you use when you are at home making dinner, when you're getting ready for bed? Like what's your language and being able to break it down. They're like, oh my gosh, that's, that's the key. And then, and so it's cool. Like 
it's cool to be a personal trainer. And, and something I've told my husband is like, I'm supposed to be writing workouts and I love writing workouts and I love helping people work out <laughs> yet. It's so much more than that. And being able to be a personal trainer with these tools in my tool belt to say, let's talk about the language. Let's talk about the sleep and the structure. Um, that's, that's, that means the world to me and it means the world to my clients too. So. And it means the world to us that you're mm -hmm. going off and you're, you're teaching and preaching it. Um, we don't hold anything back. You guys, we truly believe Emily and I, the deepest part of our hearts that we want to help as many people as we can create healthier bodies and happier lives. And the more people we teach the method to, the more those people can go teach it to other people right? It's never been about the money, you guys. Psst, hey, we would do this for free. Don't tell anybody that, <laughs> but we would do this for free. We would do this for free. Um, Shelby, if people are listening to you and going, man, she's a boss. I want to work with her. How do people get a hold of you? Uh, you can shoot me an email, Shelby C G Christie, C H R I S T Y at gmail.com. And uh, love to set you up, chat with you and, and start from there. Nice. And do you got an IG you want to toss out there? You know, I don't have a fitness IG yet. Um, still working on, on, still it's working on um, the uh, being able to take negative comments. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're drawing a nice boundary there for now. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, we all, we're all about boundaries. Well, there you go, ladies. If you're listening, you want to be able to work with Shelby, shoot her an email. She's incredible. Emily, do you believe that she's incredible too? Of course. <laughs> I love of you, course. Shelby. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, you guys. That's it. Episode 66 of the Proclivity Podcast. Next week, we have a guest coming on, and we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting. We're going to go deep with mm. this guest, and you're not going to want to miss it. He's a, a pro with this. It's what he does. You're going to want to tune in. Episode 67, we're talking about fasting. We're talking about OMAD. We're talking all kinds of stuff, right? Time-restricted windows. It's going to be great. Shelby, thank you once again for being on the show. And thank until, you, guys. This was awesome. <laughs> you're welcome. And until next time, you guys, stay healthy, stay happy. We'll see you then. Oh, 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 wait, oh, wait, wait, wait.